Today, I'm going to be showing you the top 15 modules that I consider essential for version 13. And whilst the modules are written right here and you can just copy this list and bugger off, I recommend you watch this video to see what these modules actually do. Some of these modules I've talked about in earlier videos and some of these modules are new. Either way, I recommend you check the list out as they're important. Especially the top five, I would consider essential. So if you really don't want to watch the entire videos, definitely watch the top five. They're the best. Just a heads up, these modules are meant to be system agnostic, but I've only tried them out in Pathfinder 2E, although they should work for D&D 5E. So without much further ado, I'm going to get started. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content, and let's start with module 15. Cautious Game Masters Pack adds amazing quality of life details to your Foundry game. Let me show you an example. The biggest use for Cautious Game Masters Pack is a setting you need to enable called Notify Typing. Now, if I log in as Ben in my other browser and start typing, it'll do a little notification on the bottom there. Pretty cool, huh? My players like to text chat in RP a lot, so it's good to know who is typing just in case. There's also another setting that seems to be borked on version 13. It's called Disable Game Master Speaking as Player Character. Usually it just stops you from talking as a player character, but it doesn't seem to work quite as of yet, but they'll update the module sooner or later. And it's a really useful thing if you accidentally keep typing as a player character. Overall, even just for the typing notification, I always have this module enabled because it's pretty cool. Let's move on to module 14. I love the party resources module for tracking things like victory points or other resources that the party has. For example, I'm gonna show you how to use the party resources. Now I'm gonna enable it and go to the actors tab. It looks like there's two of these. I guess either one works. Everything's a little buggy in version 13 it seems, but let's type in the resource name. For example, victory points. I can even upload an image path I put a barrel. Maybe let's call it barrel points. Default value one, minimum value one, maximum value 10. How many barrels can you hit? And it's up there. Look at that. It'll show up at the top of your screen. If you click on this setting here, it'll actually put the barrel at the top. And it's perfect for you to track resources with your party. You can also select this button to reveal and unreveal resources to your players. There's always a point in time in any game where you need to track something or another. So this module is super useful for that. I recommend it. Let's move on to module 13. This module is super simple. You can zoom in even more and zoom out even more. It's pretty cool. Let me show you some settings on it. With zoom pan options you can zoom in even more this is the default foundry zoom in which is three if i change that to nine for example i can zoom in all the way on this beautiful token if i wished same with zoom out i put at 0.01 0.333 is the default foundry zoom out. Look at that. For reference, this is as far as you can zoom out with standard foundry. I think it's a cool quality of life module. There's some other options here. For example, we've got invert scroll if you want. We've got zoom speed. There's a bunch of stuff, especially for touch pads. You can middle mouse to pan, stuff like that. I'm not gonna go through the full settings repertoire of this module, but at least now you know it exists and might be able to zoom in just that little bit more. Let's move Move on to module number 12. I actually really enjoy this module and I didn't realize I needed it until I got it. Let me show you how it works. Let's say you have, for example, an action, a generic action called force open. You can click on description to chat and it'll actually send it to chat, which is something you weren't able to do without this module. This kind of works for everything, including journal entries, although I don't recommend you share the entire journal entry to your players, but works for almost everything that you have a window for. Even this one sends the image to chat, which is pretty cool. That's it. It's super simple, but super useful. If you want to show something to your players, just click on the little tab there. Perfect. Let's move on to module number 11. Token variant art is actually a pretty complicated module, but I'm just going to show you the basic functionality of it here. I've made a commoner token. I'm just going to make a prototype token and possibly go to one of my folders that I have a bunch of images for. We're going to select one of these tokens put a star here and then select randomized wild card images. As I drag the commoner on the board, it's gonna have a random art, but the cool part about it, it lets you sort of shift 
tokens between one and the other by right clicking on the thing in the bottom right here. It's super useful for like, say a player character who shifts between forms, for example, or they have an alternate art they wanna show off sometime. I highly recommend you watch this video here that shows you how to use the module properly and have like an NPC for every occasion, for example. It's really, really cool. And I'm not even touching the depth of functionality of this module. So let's move on to module number 10. I really like Raise My Hand. It's not a module I would consider necessarily essential as the title of this video says, but it's really cool. Let me show you how it works. Let's change the setting to say display UI notification first. You can change it to be GM only and make a chat message, but let me show you what it does. There's also an X card and a show X card button here if you wanted to enable an X card for your game. But basically it just shows a little UI notification notification if somebody wants to say something like there's a lot of airtime being used and somebody wants to interrupt but it's kind of maybe a little too shy or whatever it is like they just raise their hand and the GM notices and addresses the person raising their hand it's pretty cool I like it it's come in handy more than once when there is just a lot of blabbering going on and somebody just wants to interrupt but is you know doesn't want to just jump in on the voice call so I recommend it just as a little small quality of life feature and it is on my top 10 I like it. So let's move on to number nine. I've talked about break time before in another video, but I still love this module and I think it's super useful. Let me show you how it works, even if it's a little bit borked on version 13. Basically, break time does two things. The first thing is it gives a little coffee cup icon on the top left that shows that you'll be back in a moment. You can change this message in settings, by the way, to say something really funny or hilarious. It also shows a little coffee cup icon on the bottom left here that shows that the player is currently away, which lets you know that they're not there but also the most useful part is this break time button that lets you leave or come back it shows usually a list of all players there's also a set time remaining for this break which usually used to come up with a timer i think it borked the latest version of pathfinder but it's still super useful to know that we're taking a break and yeah you need a break in between a four hour session right i love this module i recommend it let's move on to module number eight this one's a small module but i find it actually invaluable especially when you have a lot of modules enable let me show you how it works so the way i'm going to showcase this module is first by joining a world that has around 230 modules enabled and then opening up an npc sheet where you can see at the top here pretty crowded huh let me just go ahead and enable this module with the module enabled, if you go to the character sheet now, it's all nice and little icons at the top here, nice and organized. It doesn't occupy the entire top bar. This is extremely useful if you have a lot of modules that add little things at top, and there's even more that do that. Sometimes you have to drag the window all the way just to be able to see some, like the close button, for example. So this module is really useful for that. Hopefully it helps. Let's move on to module number seven. I've also talked about this module before, but it's still in incredibly invaluable, super useful, and it's plug and play. Let me show you how it works. Token Z automatically puts smaller tokens on top of larger tokens. You can also press Z on your keyboard to have it cycle if you wanted to do so. It's a great way to make sure your smaller tokens don't get overwritten by the larger ones. This module's basically plug and play. You install it and it'll just get rid of massive headaches for you. I recommend you use it. This module was made by the Ripper93, who by the way is also the sponsor of this video. And I've got a cool little bonus premium module to show you right about now. Have you noticed since you upgraded to version 13 that certain calendar modules might have borked and not been updated or maintained? Check this out. Simple timekeeping in calendar, a Ripper 93 module for version 13 only sets up a calendar for you at the top of your screen. Why does it say click me? Ooh, there's moons. That's pretty cool. Also, you can change the weather. There's a sandstorm going on and it changes the effects for you. This is amazing. Let's check out Mana Storm. Whoa! That's not all it can do. It keeps track of time and is a calendar, which is sorely needed in version 13. Check this out. Just a simple calendar functionality. You know what day it is of the week. You know what time it is of the day. There are some really cool settings here. We can have the weather be generated 
based on the latitude and the climate. We can also sync the darkness level with the scene. So right now, since it's midnight, it's gonna be dark. But if I move the time forward to 7, 8 a.m., it changes to light because it's daytime again. The calendar can be changed to whatever system you're playing in. For example, I have it in Galarian, but you can change it to Forgotten Realms, Warhammer, whatever you wish. And I do like that the UI of this calendar matches sort of the theme of version 13 too. If you want to check this module out by the Ripper 93, follow my link in the description below to access his Patreon. And thank you so much, Ripper, for sponsoring this video. Let's move on to module number five. We're in the top five now, boys. Let's go. Ownership Viewer is an essential module that allows you to track who owns what actor, token, or whatever else in the system. For example, Ownership Viewer gives these little icons in the right side of everything. And if you select it, and let's say Ben has ownership of Valeros, it gives a little icon here on the right. It's super easy. Works for macros too. For example, any macros that are observer to your players have a little square icon on the right. And if you uh, unlink the macro to your players, you can see it right there to see who has ownership of what macro. It's a super simple, tiny module that adds a major quality of life because you need to be handing out stuff to your players and sometimes you don't know what's handed out to who. So I highly recommend this module. Definitely in my top five and all these top five modules are all essential. Let's move on to module number four. Quick insert is essential. It should be in base foundry, but obviously it isn't. Uh, this is a module I cannot live without. Let me show you how it works. The way quick insert works is super simple. You type control plus space of, and it'll show you all the potions. These are in the compendium or in your actor's directory. And you can actually easily drag and drop it from wherever it compendium, from your compendium into your items directory or even character sheets. Let me show you how that works. Kyra, for example, really wants to buy a potion of healing or a healing potion. So I can just type in healing potion and just drag it from her and drop it into her inventory right here. Super simple, super easy how it works. It works for almost, if not every everything macros actors items class features actions everything in the compendium spells literally everything highly recommend you get quick insert it's invaluable for me running sessions in as a dm let's move on to module number three prime performance is a plug and play module that simply outright increases your performance in foundry i'll be honest i don't even know what to show you this just plug and play module increases your performance i install it and forget about it but i have noticed and other GMs have told me they've noticed an increased performance in Foundry. So just install it, leave it running, go for it. Let's move on to module number two. Dice Tray is a small quality of life module so that really should be in base Foundry, but for some reason isn't. Let me show you what it does. Quite simply put, adds a dice tray at the bottom. Then you can just click on the dice and it'll put it in chat and then roll the dice for you as a 1d100. This is pretty much the extent of the module. It adds a dice tray at the bottom right, but I couldn't imagine living without it. Speaking of dice, let's talk about the number one module that you should probably already have and know about, but if you don't, you really need this module. Let's talk about module number one. If you only get one module for Foundry, I recommend you get Dice So Nice. It just adds to the experience. Let me show you how it works. Dice So Nice is simple. If you roll a dice, like for example, using the dice tray, it's gonna roll a dice on the screen and sometimes it even has special effects. You can easily change your dice and settings and change it to a different type of dice if you wish. This is really cool and every player can have their own type of dice that sort of represents their character. I can't play without dice so nice, although there is one setting I do recommend you change. I'm talking about, of course, the display chat message immediately setting. I have this turned on, but if you turn it off and save changes, it actually waits for the dice to roll before putting it in chat, which is quite irritating. I like to see my dice simultaneous with the chat message, so I recommend you select display chat message immediately. And those were my top 15 modules. Do you agree with the sentiment? Do you think there should be some modules that should be in the top 15? Put them in the comments below. Hey, watch this video. YouTube thinks you'll really like it. And like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.